Well, I think uh, I think first off, it's probably it's probably good to say that we don't actually build physical robots. Um, these are essentially software robots or software automations uh, that sit on either back-end servers or or laptops or, des or, or desktops. Um, so robotic process automation or RPA um, is the use of software tools uh, to automate or to digitize uh, the the analog work that employees are doing on their computers, the, the work that's boring and mundane and repetitive. And it offloads these tools so that humans can focus on the things that they're, that they're good at. So I, I suppose a good example of that, um, that a lot of people would understand is, is in the finance world, at least is in the area of audit. So a lot of data needs to be collected uh, to do an audit, but then humans are only really needed to do the analysis, to assess the risk and to put into place the actions uh, to offset that risk. And so a lot of time in audit is spent collecting the data and pulling it together from you know, many different um, uh, uh, sources. And only at the end do people actually do the stuff that people are good at, uh, which is, is, is the decision-making. And so the, the bots can collect that data and actually start to make a bit of sense of the patterns within it and then hand it to the to the human to do the decision making the stuff that the humans are best at all about productivity uh, it's all about either getting more out of the people that you currently have or in the days of recovery from covid building back an organization that's leaner than it was before but doing the same amount of work that it was doing before. So I think any single person in, a, in any job, whether you're the CEO or whether you're an entry level intern coming into an organization has got a bunch of tasks that they do that they know that they don't need to be doing. Repetitive things that happen either every day, every week or every month um, that are really adding not a huge amount of value in the, in the collation of that information or the, the swivel chair, copy and pasting from one from one app to another, um, yet they're still doing that. You know, we're, 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 we're hiring these people to do the work that can really be offloaded to, to machines. Um, and so organizations are getting productivity gains here um, that, that, are, that are really astronomical. Uh, and they often start from the very first day that the bots are turned on. A task that might've taken three minutes to do before can literally be done in seconds to allow the people to serve customers more, um, to do higher value work, or to do those things that sit in all of our to-do lists that are just a little bit out of reach because we just don't have the time in the day. Um, so, you know, while these bots are doing mundane, repetitive, boring work, uh, it's freeing up time and that equation adds to higher productivity. And that's, that's, that's really where this is. And so it's up to business leaders to then decide what are we going to do with that extra time? How can we advance either the organization's profitability, reduce their costs, or in the case of government where we work a lot, um, serve citizens better? We've had a, we've had a retailer here in Australia through, through COVID um, who has a, a number of small suppliers that are, that are, that are providing um, uh, the retail goods to them. And a lot of these suppliers were struggling, especially in the early days of, 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 of COVID. And so what they decided to do is instead of the 45 to 60 day payment terms that they were paying these employee, that these, these suppliers with, they brought that down to 10 days. Now, it wasn't going to be permanent. It was a short term um, um, help that they were providing for them. But, you know, can you imagine taking a, you know, invoice times that were getting to 45 to 60 days and getting them down to 10 days, you would have to put thousands of extra people on for that, for that type of thing. But they were able to do that pretty much within a few days. And so now while they revert back after when, when COVID comes back, that also gives them the ability to go to those providers and say, hey, what if we were able to do it in say 30 days instead of the 45 days before? What impact would that make to you? And how can we use that to serve our joint customers uh, better? So, you know, that, that ability to take those things that were people heavy um, and, and, and really take a lot of the, the fat and the inefficiencies out of that, um, that's just one example there. Um, but there's, you know, there's many other ones. I mean, another COVID-related one uh, was a Dublin hospital uh, who, who took away 
three hours of administrative work from nurses, um, especially on the COVID wards, because the amount of admin that was associated with COVID had really skyrocketed. They were able to take three hours of, of time back. Now, on the one hand, you could say, well, that saves three hours times whatever a nurse has paid in an hour. But actually, that's how they weren't thinking about it. They were thinking, how many more patients, how much more patient time can an individual nurse spend once that administrative time, that pointing and clicking on a computer back at the, at the, at the desk, what can that translate to in terms of human benefit? Um, you know, we've got a whole raft of, of, of these type of, of examples. And while each of these are case by case, when you look at it across the whole organization, and when an organization gets an automation first mindset, um, that's, that's really where it takes off. And, you know, this isn't a project that's just done in one year. It's a new way of thinking that says people shouldn't be doing the tasks that don't add value to the customers that the people really want to be working on.